Hello everyone, welcome to the uh, 2020 AMCA preparation webinar. So uh, this is Eddie. I just certainly uh, got out of from the class. So if you were in my class, hi again. All right, so today, uh, the first thing we're going to do is to briefly introduce about AMCA. So if you are here, that means you probably already know what is AMCA. But for those who uh, don't know or don't know what exactly uh, are we expecting in AMCA, here are some basic informations. So AMC 8 is a 40-minute, 25, five-choice, multiple-choice exam. That means for every question, you have uh, five different choices. So it's really hard to guess it right. Uh, the average time is 1 minute and 36 seconds per uh, question. And we do have a, a difference of the questions. For example, the first 10 questions are considered easy question. 11 to 20 are medium question. 21 to 25 are considered difficult questions. So, of course, your question strategy should not be, oh, every question I'm going to take a minute and 36 seconds to do it. Uh, for example, in the easy question, supposedly every question takes about 45 seconds and for the medium that's about the average time around uh, 1 minute 15 seconds to 30 seconds and for the really difficult question and if it passed three minutes time it's time to uh, try the other questions and i mean wor worst case scenario you can just take a random guess it's a multiple choice question after you have 20 percent of the chance and uh so people usually uh, reserve five minutes for checkup. Just uh, it's not the time for you to check the questions if that's right or not because you don't have time to do that. It's mainly check if you get the trans uh, the scantron right, uh, and if you have any unfinished work, definitely take random uh, try on these. I see a lot of kids who leave blank on these, uh, which I mean, strategy speaking, it's not a uh, right thing to do. Uh, the AMCA will host on November every year, and it's for everyone who's 8th grade and below, and mainly uh, people go there uh, the first year as the 5th grade, and uh, people usually uh, expect to get grades, uh, great grades uh, when they're in the 7th grade or 6th grade. But if you're in 5th grade and you already got uh, like honor roll, that's top 5%, that means you're doing very good, and it's time for you to get ready for AMC 10. Uh, every year we have about 100,000 uh, contestants uh, in the uh, competition. However, like what we said, only 5% get into the honor roll. So be careful to see if you are, uh, you are the numerator or the denominator here. All right. So... Uh, a lot of uh, parents ask me, hey, uh, AMCA sounds like a math competition. Uh, I don't really want my kids to go to math competition. Uh, I'm not pushing him or her to that direction. Should my kids still go to AMC 8? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, AMC 10 or AMC 12 are more into math competition. AMC 8 is sim uh, simply just a... Uh, I would say a situation that try to see if you're a good fit for the uh, for the math uh, skill in the future. It's not necessarily a competition. Uh, if you check out the questions, uh, instead of the last five questions, it looks a little bit more like the competition questions. Uh, the other 20 questions uh, looks just like our regular uh, questions. As long as you understand the concept, uh, there should be no problem to get those questions correct. Yes, it's a place to show your talent and commitment, also stand out from the others in application, especially when you are trying to uh, apply for, uh, you know, very famous private schools. Uh, you know, the Harker just announced that the ISE exam is now optional. Uh, they are more into the math competitions instead of standardized tests. All right, so, uh, yes. And if those of you who want to take the math uh, math competition routes, then do not miss AMC8. Uh, miss AMC, uh, missing AMC8 means that you don't have an indicator of you are capable of. So, for example, uh, when I was in high school, I took the AMC12. Uh, back in that time, I didn't know what I what I'm good at because I never took AMC8 before. Uh, because I, I'm here when I was in uh, 10th grade. Uh, it's, I'm already passing that age. Uh, 
Yes. So uh, AMC 8 is a good indicator. If you get a good grade in AMC 8, you have a high chance to be a, a very good contestant in AMC 10 or AMC 12. All right, so here we have the honor uh, determination. Uh, if you are in uh, a grade six or below and receive more than 15 questions, you will get achievement uh, achievement role, uh, should be achievement role. And if you are in the top 5%, you'll get uh, receive an honor roll. Uh, that's the score around 16 to 19. And uh, people say it can go over to uh, 20, it's possible. And the top 1% goes to the distinguished honor roll. And those students usually receive 20 to 23 points. So you see the strategy should be, uh, you should be focusing on the first 20 questions first. Make sure those questions are right. All right. And uh, so for those of you who asked how, say, what should I do to make sure to get into to the top 5%? Uh, here are something you should already do. Uh, you should already finish the 35 past exams. Uh, if you haven't, then yes, yeah, the time to do that. And if you already done that, summarize your strengths and your weakness for each module. Uh, in the last five questions, uh, the five questions are usually from five different modules. So uh, check on your favorite one and get them done quickly. And then uh, strategically abandon those who which you are not the best suit with, and that is the strategy. So knowing your strengths and weakness is very important here. And yes, I also received some uh, questions. Uh, the three common issues uh, kids have about AMC 8 from their parents, uh, including first, uh, we already spend a long time. The time commitment is really high. We spend uh, hours and hours to prepare for AMC 8. How come we still didn't achieve anything? Didn't achieve anything means didn't get into the top 5%, I'm assuming. Uh, I also have a uh, parent says, my kid is always making careless mistakes. He knew how to do it, but he just cannot get a perfect score on the, on the first 20 questions. Uh, I mean, no one is guaranteed to get a perfect score in 25 questions because, you know, the last five questions, you will see some weird questions. But the top 20 questions, the first 20 questions, I believe that everyone should get those right. Um, yes, so if you are making careless mistakes, that's very unfortunate. Uh, so what you can do uh, will be answered here, okay? And the third question is that uh, the question seems uh, very easy if we have two hours to do it. That means if you don't time it, uh, I'm thinking if you don't time it, you can get all of the question right. But uh, for 40 minutes, there is no way to finish it. Uh, I understand that concern. Uh, I see that a lot of kids knows how to do it, but with a timer there, they're just getting very stressed out and do not have enough time to finish it. All right, so before you know if your kids is capable of doing uh, AMC A questions, here, Think Academy uh, really prepared a uh, question set for you. This is a 25 question, uh, question set. It's very classic AMC 8 real problems. And uh, yes, the kids will have 40 minutes to do them. So if you haven't tried that, definitely go try it. Uh, and if you get more than 15 points, uh, that means you have a very high chance to fight for the honor roll uh, in two months. And if you get around 12 to 15 points, that means, well, you have a shot to do it. And if you have uh, the score lower than 12 points, that means, well, you can go, you can have fun, but do not really count on getting anything uh, this year. Uh, I mean, if you count on it, the higher the expectation, the more um, sadness after the, uh, you know, the score comes out. All right, and uh, those are three very important concerns, and I will get to them. But before we do that, uh, let's hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you don't miss the next webinar. We're going to have uh, webinars every week, so definitely subscribe it. Um, I think cur currently I'm doing a very good job. All right, so here uh, I prepared you guys four uh, classic questions. Uh, on AMC 8, it represents four different uh, difficulties. The first one we have is from the number and operation module, and this is the kind of question we need to get done in 45 seconds. Uh, for example, the first second you see this, 
you realize, hey, uh, there we have an uh, arithmetic sequence. That's what's going on in the uh, denominator. So we add them together, the first term plus the last term, multiply the number of terms divided by 2. We have 4 times 9, that's you know, uh, 36. And then on the top, we have 1 multiplied by 2 all the way to 8. Uh, that we can just change uh, 36 to 4 multiplied by 9. Okay, so the 4 here are cancelled out, the 9 is cancelled out with the 3 here, and another 3 can be cancelled with the 6 here. Okay, so we reduce that into 2 times 5 times 2 times 7 times 8. 7 times 8 is 56, 56 times 2 is 112, and 2 times 5 is 10. 10 times 112, that equals to 1120. All right, so 1120 will be the answer. So this is the question you need to, uh, this is like a, a muscle memory, right? So you you see that and you have the reaction. You get a thing done in 45 seconds and move on, never check back. So this is one of the example. We also have the example that's uh, not necessarily a hard question, but it has some trap, okay? Uh, for, for this one, it's a word problem. A number of students of Fibonacci Middle School are taking part in the community service project. The ratio of 8th graders to 6th graders is 5 to 3, and the ratio of 8th graders to 7th graders is 8 to 5. What is the smallest number of students uh, that could be participating in the project? So, yes, the math question is not hard, but you need to understand the concept of ratio that's the first thing. And then being able to read the question and get what they're actually asking. So they're asking for the smallest, smallest number, right? Smallest number. That means you need to uh, link these three ratios together, really. So you have sixth graders, seventh graders, and eighth graders. All right. Uh, in these two ratios, five to three and eight to five, we both have five here. So a lot of kids just, oh, it's very easy. So it's just going to be eight to five to three. However, if you read a ratio very carefully, you see that the eight uh, on the second ratio is actually representing the eighth graders. And uh, five is also representing the eighth graders. The eighth graders should be the link here. Okay. So for the first one, we have five to three. Uh, let's do it here. We have five to three. On the second one, we have 8 to 5, 8 to 5. Supposedly, for the 8th graders, they should have the same unit, uh, unit quantity, okay? Uh, to make them have the same unit quantity, I'm going to multiply the first ratio by 8, multiply the second ratio by 5. Therefore, I have 40 here, I have 25 here, and I have 3 times 8, that's 24 here. So our nil ratio for 6th graders, 7th graders, and 8th graders is 24 to 25 to 40. And I add them together, uh, all of the, if all of the unit are representing one person, I will have the smallest number of students, which is 89 here. So this is the question it takes about one minute or one minute and a half to do it. Right, uh, so 89. Luckily, it's uh, one of the number in the Fibonacci sequence, so it actually fit our question. Says Fibonacci Middle School. Very interesting here. All right, uh, and we also have hard question. This kind of question is the thing that if you didn't get it in th three minutes, you probably will not get it in ten minutes either. So this is a geometry question. Uh, the point of this question is knowing the property of the inner angles of polygons and use the geometry rule uh, in a flexible fashion. Okay, so in this question we have ooh, we have a uh, uh, equal equal angular here, right? A hexagon, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, six edges for a hexagon. And what is the inner angle for hexagon? Well, uh, we know a triangle has the inner, side, uh, inner angle of 180, so that's one triangle, and we have, a two, we have two triangles, we have three triangles, one, two, three, four, uh, four triangles. So 
we kind of add them together to have 4 multiplied by 180 that equals to 720, right? 720 degrees. That's the inner angle for a hexagon. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 angles there. So at 720 degrees divided by 6 angles, for each angle, it worth 120 degrees. So that is the every angle in the hexagon words. For example, that ABC is 120 degrees. All right. By the way, if we talk about ABC, the angle here is 90, uh, is a square. And the angle here for uh, equilateral triangle, that is 60. So it's very easy to find out the last one, right? We have 120, a 60, a 90. The last angle we have here, we need to use 360 to subtract all of these. We have 90 degrees, right? So yes, the triangle KBC is actually a very good. It's a right triangle. It's a right triangle. So if, as long as it's a right triangle, we should be able to find the area by simply looking for the two legs of the triangle. All right, the first one, we have the leg that's BC. And in the question, we are told that BC equals to FE. And if BC equals to FE and FE is an uh, edge, the side length of the square uh, EFGH, right? And it has the area of 32. We should know that EF will be square root of 32, right? And we also know uh, that BC will be square root of 32. All right, now only thing we need to know is BK. And BK is actually an edge of the equilateral triangle JBK. And for equilateral triangle, we have a JB side, the JB side, which is the side of the uh, square uh, ABJI, right? So that will have uh, another uh, side length of a triangle, uh, of a square, which is square root of 18. All right, so we have two legs, square root of 32, multiplied by square root of 18. Don't forget, for a triangle, we're going to uh, divide this by 2. All right, uh, now it's the hard part. I have square root of 32 times 18. To save your time, I'm, I'm going to just announce it. It's going to be 24 over 2. That's 12. So this is the question. If you don't have enough knowledge of uh, geometry and you don't know how to do it, yes. Uh, if it takes three minutes for you to do it, that means after 10 minutes, you probably still don't have a chance to do it. All right. And for the fourth questions, by the way, this kind of question, if you see in the actual uh, competition, uh, yes, abandon them and then come back. All right. The last question is the question that's really fun, the combinatorics question. Uh, these are the questions really hard to predict because AMCA really tend to have these kind of questions every year, and you cannot predict what kind of question are they give, gonna give out. So basically you have uh, A, B, C, D, and E, okay? You have five cups. And you have uh, 12 slips of paper, which uh, number are these, right? Which number are these? And we put the different uh, numbers into the cups, and the sum of these numbers actually come up uh, as a, a consecutive increasing from A to E. So if it's consecutive increasing, that means, for example, uh, if this one is 5, the next one will be 6, the next one will be 7, the next one will be 8, the next one will be 9. Okay, now if you uh, add all of these numbers together, and divide them by five, you will actually get the uh, average of the five cups, which so happened to be the one in the middle cup. You add them together, you realize that uh, their sum is actually 35. Their sum is 35. And 35 divided by five, you have seven as your average. And yeah, what about it? You have seven. Uh, so that will be the cup C. Right for the cup C, you have seven there. Uh, okay, so if you're doing this, just thinking about um, 
how to solve that? Uh, I'm just gonna put 3.5 anywhere I want. You have too many choices, and it's not the right thing to do. Uh, so what I'm thinking about is try to take advantage of the uh, multiple choice questions. You totally have five choices, right? So if you can narrow down your choices, that's one thing you can do. For example, uh, it says the slip with two goes into the cup E, okay? So that has a two already. That means the only thing you need to do is put down uh, nine minus two, that's seven. So for seven, you have some different ways. You can use four plus three. You can use 4.5 plus 2.5. Uh, yes, there's no, basically no other way to do it. And any of these ways, you do not have 3.5 in this, right? You do not have 3.5 in this. So E will be ruled out. By the same reason, for C, you are going to make seven. So C is ruled out as well. Okay, now let's look at the other one. We have the slip with a three goes into cup B. Okay, if a slip with three goes into cup B, basically you have no other choice but put another three there to make a six. So the choice B is taken away as well. So all you have left is A or D. Okay, so for choice A, let's assume that we put a 3.5 in this, okay? And what else do you put in? What else do you put in to get a 5? You can only put in 1.5. And 1.5 is not available here. So A is not applicable as well. You do not care how to do it. You just put down D here. Okay? D is the only option that you have. All right? Very good. So this is the question that you need to take advantage of that this is a multiple choice question. Uh, so rule out those are impossible what happened uh, in the last you will choose it this will save your time so this is the fourth kind of question so yes for the first kind of question uh definitely do not get those wrong uh just double check triple check on uh, your basic knowledges make sure there's no blind spot in your knowledge points and for the second kind of question you need to make sure that uh, you do this kind of question a lot so it's really hard for you to fall in the trap make sure that you understand what the question is asking for the third kind of question uh, you need to have a good taste of how to breathe through a question if you've done enough very hard questions uh, you will have a sense of how to breathe through questions uh, how to tackle them one by one. Uh, if all you have done are some basic questions, then you don't really have the sense of narrowing down, uh, of tackle down the uh, hard problems. So uh, that's the first three questions. The last one, I'm just uh, thinking, yes, do enough fun questions. I mean, AMC 8 is all about uh, math and fun. So uh, might as well have fun with it. Okay, speaking of the knowledge points, so here is the uh, important modules. We believe that's impossible. Uh, that's, uh, that's important for you to uh, understand. So we have number and operations, geometry, word problems, counting, and each of them we have uh, like little, uh, small, tiny modules uh, under that, right? And we also have number theory, which is a big thing and we have combinatorics. So uh, don't worry about it if you miss any, because I'm going to come back to it. All right, now I'm going to talk about how to maximize your improvement. Uh, since we only have about two to two and a half months to prepare for it, uh, before September, that's in August, you should probably have done about 25 previous year uh, full set exam. So if you are uh, going with the AMC 8, uh, let's tackle AMC 8 question, uh, question set, uh, you are doing a very good job. You probably already have done uh, 25 questions already. And do not just do the questions. Label the missed questions by modules. And then uh, summarize your strengths and weakness. Uh, if you haven't done 25 previous questions, uh, do them. Uh, if you really don't have the time, at least do seven of those. Okay. Uh, by the way, the new Let's Tackle AMC 8 class are uh, happening, uh, I think, two weeks after. 
uh, definitely check that out. We only have, uh, I think that's the last uh, seven question set. So do those seven questions, um, I think you will at least get some idea of what AMC 8 is about. And uh, in the mid-September to October, that's what we, ha what we are having right now, uh, enhance the module practice, uh, definitely find your strength and weakness and go uh, go tackle them, them down one by one. Review your missed questions, study and practice the module. And uh, yes, uh, we will have a Think Academy AMCA prep class. Uh, this is the class uh, designed for those who try to score very well. So we assume that you already have some basic ideas of what AMC 8 is, and you already uh, have some basic knowledge point on that. So if you come in and say, oh, I'm a second grader, I just want to know what is AMC 8, then this class might not be good for you. So we'll take about, uh, so fourth graders are welcomed, uh, fifth graders are welcomed, uh, yes, something like that. Uh, but if you're just trying, trying AMC 8 here, then you should take the let's tackle AMC 8 questions. Uh, the AMCA prep class are for the students who really want to win this year, okay? And for the time of the test, uh, yes, two weeks before you are going to do one or two tests just to make sure uh, you are in that zone, right? Work on one or two full, te uh, full sets and uh, ensure that from question one to question 15, there's no missed question. If you miss any one of them, take them seriously. Do not say, oh, I'm just getting careless. I'll get that right next time. Oh, oh, this one just calculation problem. That doesn't count. Well, do not have those thoughts, okay? So get three to four difficult questions to reach on a row. You only need three to four difficult questions to reach the honor roll, right? So if you get the 15 questions right, all you need to do is to score three to four questions in the next 10 questions to receive 18 to 19 points. Think about it. That's already already the money in the bank, right? You just need to uh, grab it and the honor roll is yours. About the uh, AMCA prep class, uh, we started that uh, this, actually today, today morning, and we just have uh, two classes full. One is from uh, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. That's Michael Jiang. And then Sunday from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. from Michael He. So all of these two teachers are very famous Let's Tackle AMC 8 teachers. And uh, one class about uh, me that's during the weekdays from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, that's my class. So what I usually do is uh, I teach the uh, fifth graders uh, eighth level. So they are prepared for AMC 8. Uh, I know them a lot, so I know how to teach uh, the kids who wants to go to math competition as well. So, uh, yes, I also uh, prepare the AMCA prep class with with the uh, content teams, so I understand this class. Um, just like the other two Michaels, uh, we are sure we can do this well. All right, so yeah, this is the end of our webinar. Uh, it's not too long. It's just it's that time of the uh, the year again, right? We need to get ready for the AMC8. So if you want to know more about AMC8, uh, my QR code uh, of my WeChat is on the uh, left hand side. And if you want, if you are a fifth graders and who wants to go to uh, fifth grade. Uh, just want to know more information about us, uh, check the QR code on the right-hand side. And if you think, oh, this is a fun webinar and maybe we want more information from Think Academy, definitely subscribe to our channel. And uh, yes, that's it. Uh, have a fun evening and have a fun long weekend. Thank you so much.